Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. I'm Mike. This time we're taking a look at the Star Wars Rogue One U-Wing Starfighter by Hasbro. Now if you haven't already, please follow, like, and subscribe to my social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get a notification of when I post new content. All right, so here we have the Rogue One U-Wing Starfighter by Hasbro. This was first released six years ago on Rogue Friday, which was September the 30th of 2016. Now, this particular ship was a totally new design for the Star Wars universe and was designed specifically for Rogue One as a gunship and troop transport. Now, if you're watching this product review and you don't know anything about the U-Wing, Incom Corporation UT-60D U-Wing Starfighter is a gunship and transport. It is 23.99 meters in length with the S-foils in their attack position. It's 8.54 meters wide and 3.51 meters tall. It has a maximum acceleration of 2600 G and 95 MGLT or mega light hour. Maximum atmospheric speed on a U-Wing is 950 kph. It's powered by four Incom 4J7 fusual thrust engines, with each engine containing a Class 1 Incom GBK585 hyperdrive motivator. It is equipped with a Kempak deflector shield generator and uses a microaxial HYD modular navicomputer for navigations. Targeting systems on the U-Wing are controlled by a Fabrotec ANQ 2.9 tracking computer and an IN344B Sightline holographic imaging system on the heads-up display. Now, the U-Wing is armed with two forward-mounted Tame and Back KX-7 laser cannons, as well as two M45 Roba heavy blasters in the troop bay. It also has two micro-torpedo launchers. The cockpit utilizes two ejector seats, and the total crew complement is two pilots, two door gunners, eight troops in the troop bay. It is life support equipped and contains two weeks of consumables. The U-Wing costs 65,000 credits each. Now, during the Empire's rise to power, the Incom Corporation was producing both the UT-60D U-Wing as well as the T-65 X-Wing Starfighter. Now, the Empire seized control of the Incom Corporation, and as they did so, some of the executive officers, as well as the lead design team, stole the plans to both the UT-60D and the T-65B X-Wing and defected to the Rebel Alliance. Some of their existing inventory that had already been produced was flown to different locations and handed over to the Alliance while the design team utilized the designs for both ships and worked in conjunction with rebel engineers in various locations, including hastily constructed hangars and hollowed out asteroids, outer rim hideouts, as well as on rebel starships to construct and assemble various components for both of these starships and place them in service of the Alliance. Due to this, there were very few U-wings available in the rebel Alliance. As time went on, more of the ships were built and used by the Alliance in its war against the Empire. After the defeat of the Empire and the establishment of the New Republic, the UT-60 became the primary troop transport for New Republic Special Forces. So it's a really cool ship with a fascinating in-universe history, and it's quickly become my favorite ship within the Star Wars universe. So let's talk about the packaging. Up at the top, you have the Star Wars Rogue One banner with the Death Trooper and AT-ACT and the artwork there. You've got some amazing box art on the packaging of the actual toy in an action sequence being pursued by TIE Strikers in the background and AT-ACTs on the surface of Scarif. In the lower right inset, you've got the Captain Cassian Andor action figure, which was exclusive to this set. The lower left inset, you have an obligatory product shot of the vehicle demonstrating the swing wing design of the strike foils. In the lower center, it denotes that this is also a Nerf product. The U-Wing was the first of the Star Wars toy line to feature an integrated Nerf launcher, which I think is really cool. I do like it. I know a lot of fans despise it. I don't. I think it's just a cool addition. It was also featured on the TIE Striker, as well as the AT-ACT and Harrison Dula's A-Wing. 
In the upper right, you see a small icon for the Star Wars Studio Effects app, which is still currently available on the iTunes Store at the time of this video. On the side panel of the packaging, you've got some artwork of Cassian Andor. On the back of the packaging, you've got your obligatory product shots. In a brief bio, it says Rebel U-Wing Fighter, a sturdy troop transport and gunship used by the Rebel Alliance. The U-Wing Starfighter is a well-armed swing-wing vessel that must penetrate heavy fire zones to deposit soldiers onto battlefields and then fly air support during dangerous missions against the Empire. In the top right inset, you see the Nerf launcher deployed and firing a Nerf dart. Below that, you see another demonstration of the strike foils and how that operates, as well as the cockpit canopy being open for the action figure to be inserted. Now, due to the scale of this vehicle, it does not have a functional troop bay. This particular toy is 146 scale. The action figure is 118th scale. If this were an actual 118th scale vehicle, it would be nearly three feet in length. I hope in the future that we see this re-released in the vintage collection with a functional troop bay in a larger scale. Even if we don't, this is still a cool toy. All right, here is the U-Wing fighter outside of the packaging, fully assembled. Now, before we begin, let's talk about what's included. You've got the ship, the four engines, and the S-foils, which you have to assemble. And you have the Cassian Andor action figure with his included Blastec A280 CFE blaster. You've got two of the Elite Nerf own darts that are included. You've got a little flyer here for the Studio Effects app, as well as a QR code, and it talks about that. You've got your instruction pamphlet here which is self-explanatory, very simple. It outlines how to attach the four engine nacelles as well as the strike foils, and then details how to operate the Nerf launcher. And on the back, it shows how to configure the strike foils and their attack and landing position, as well as their flight mode and how the landing gear functions. Now to begin, let's talk about the Cassian Andor action figure, which you guys can see here. And this is a basic 5 POA action figure. A lot of nice molded detail though. A lot of detail in his jacket, his rank badge here. The Greebly up here, the comm badge on his jacket, his gun belt. He's got his blaster here in the holster. And wiggle it out and you guys can see that there it does not have the components to configure it into a rifle and as far as articulation the head will swivel left and right forward and backward motion on the arms as well as forward and backward motion on the legs. That's it, no waist articulation. And again, this figure is exclusive to this packaging. Also included are the two Nerf darts and we'll pop those out when we take a look at the launcher. All right, so let's take a look at the U-Wing. Now up close, there is a lot of molded detail in this ship. As you guys can see here, you can see all the panel lines, nice detailing in the engines there, the forward grill here, your Tam and Back KX7 laser cannons here. You got your Ford landing lights here. Down here, these black sections, this would actually be transparent steel ventral viewports like this for the pilot and co-pilot so that they can see when they're landing, just like on a modern day helicopter. And that's really what this is. This is the Star Wars equivalent to a Black Hawk. And you can see that I'm really blessed because this one has fairly straight strike foils. They aren't warped. I know a lot of people complain about those being warped outside of the packaging. These are fairly straight. If you buy one and they're warped, the easiest way to remedy that is to remove them and use a hair dryer on low power for about 40 seconds and get them really, really hot. You could also 
heat some water or use really hot tap water, not boiling, but really hot, and submerge these in that water for the same length of time, take them out and place them on a flat surface like this table and tape them down using painter's tape so that they will cool and retain that position. There's the side troop bay door that's molded in. Of course, it doesn't open or anything. And I think one of the primary reasons it doesn't include a troop bay is because of the Nerf launcher. This launcher takes up the entire cavity inside this toy. Here's your cockpit canopy. You open it up. There's your cockpit. It's just a molded seat. There's no console or controls or anything. It's got this bungee cord for the pilot to fit in there. And you can take Cassian and remove his blaster. And there's a port right here where you can plug his blaster in there like that if you so choose. I don't really care for doing that. And you can take Cassian and get him into a reclined position. fit him inside here like this. Just push him down and close your canopy like that. A lot of nice detailing on the engines. There's the landing gear. You can fold them up like this. And on the actual U-wing, the forward landing gear is actually up here, not down here. There's the detailing on the rear of the engine, the top. Here's the slider for your S-foils. Well, if you hold it forward, push it out like this, you can extend the strike foils into their cruise mode and bring them back into attack mode or landing position like that. All the way around, it's a really, really nice toy. Even compared to the Vintage Collection X-Wings, this is still the largest Starfighter that we've gotten. For those of you who are customizers and enjoy toy photography, this is one of those items that has limitless possibilities with your Star Wars collection. Okay, let's talk about the main play feature on the toy, and that is the Nerf Launcher. So if you pick the ship up and roll it over, you see this button right here. If you depress that, that would deploy the Nerf launcher. I'm gonna fold the bottom landing gear up so you can see this. And you take the Nerf dart, push it in, push it back like that, and it's ready to go. And to fire it, you just press the button and the Nerf dart's gonna come out. Now also on the U-Wing, you have these two little loops right here, and that is to store the Nerf darts. That's really cool. And then to store it, you can just push it back up into the ship like that. You know, I think this is one of the best toys that Hasbro has ever released in their Star Wars line to date. The design, the features, the packaging, the scale of the toy, all of it make it very memorable. The U-Wing has established its place in Star Wars lore. Looking back on Rogue One, you know, that is the most plotted and successful entry into the Star Wars saga to date by Disney. And having this collectible and toy in hand is a way to connect with that feeling of action and adventure and hope that the story in Rogue One represents. If you don't have a Ewing in your collection, I would definitely recommend buying one. They are continuing to increase in value as most of the ships and vehicles in the Star Wars toy line do each year. And they're one of the most sought after collectibles from Rogue One as well. There you have the Star Wars Rogue One Ewing Starfighter by Hasbro.